All right, so the purpose of this video is to go over what is being uh, called the gray skull green paint theme that I came up with by accident, effectively, for the create a castle system uh, as shown here. So I really like this kind of a spooky theme going on, um, obviously with that nice green kind of ghostly undertone and then throwing on a little bit of the interference violet before hitting it with a, a mixture of one-to-one -one caverns dry brush to stone edge dry brush just to bring out some of those fine details so the the way that you come up with this color uh, and for me it was an accident is you're using bubbles blue by Picorni paint arcane acid and um, this would be the stalactite color for the under doom paint scheme if you were using base gray and I didn't have that so I used dungeon gray and then a little bit of lava orange and um, for the base color though the very base base color you're using basalt blue alizarin crimson hue by golden and that's in a high flow acrylic you can get that at Michaels and a little a couple of drops of white and that will make the purple. And you're doing this in a four to one ratio with just a couple drops of the white. And you want that to be a nice purple. Um, unfortunately, what ended up happening here is I recorded over myself painting the base layer, but uh, effectively what you're trying to do is just cover up all of the dungeon gray. You don't want any of that showing. This is not like, oh, let me do a heavy dry brush, no. Um, yeah, you don't want it to be big thick pools of paint on there, but you do want it to have uh, enough paint obviously to cover up the, uh, the underlying dungeon gray color. And one thing too to note is that some of the castle pieces and some of the city builder pieces come in two different castings um, with respect to the color. So this one I think is like dungeon gray and then there's one that's a base gray color but once you hit it with a thick base coat it really doesn't matter after that kind of how it shakes out so now I'm going to go ahead and start mixing up the gray skull green color okay and honestly this is not really an exact science I'd like to think that it's effectively a three to two to two um, ratio of Bubbles Blue, Arcane Acid, and then Dungeon Gray, and a little bit of that Lava Orange color. But again, this is why it is super important to always have swatches with you whenever you're painting for consistency purposes, especially if you're going to endeavor to paint a large set and there's going to be days, maybe even weeks in between your painting where you need to um, you know, come back and reference the paint. You don't exactly know what the ratio is going to be. So you want to swatch so that you can test out what the paint, um, you know, what, basically what the paint was against what you just mixed up in your mix cup. So as you can see here, I am just adding the uh, Dungeon Gray the arcane acid, the bubbles blue, and then I'll hit it with a few drops at the very end of that lava orange. And what I found is that, you know, the, the arcane acid mixture here to the bubbles blue, you really kind of want almost a, like a, a three to two ratio. And the dungeon gray is really kind of what, what brings it down kicks it down a notch into that nice um, earthy kind of green tone and so I like that to be more of like a three to three to two ratio so so you're doing you know three parts bubbles blue three parts dungeon gray two parts arcane acid and then just that little bit of the uh, the lava orange and again, as you can see here, I'm mixing in more and more of the Dungeon Gray because I, you, you just need to be able to bring this color down some. Otherwise, you get this kind of like mint chocolate chip color, which um, 
again it's great for ice cream but you don't want to be putting it anywhere near your castle pieces uh, you know it, it works really well I think for the under doom paint scheme but you know for what I ended up with this is this is the way to go and as you can see this is darkening it up to be near exactly what you want and I'm using a popsicle stick here because my youngest son leaves them all over the house and they're really handy for mixing up paint in the cup you don't have to dirty up a brush that you then have to um, you know wring out okay now the last piece here is to hit it with a little bit of lava orange just a you know a few drops here I just kind of <laughs> squirted it in there but ultimately you, you just want a few drops and that's as you can see that just adds almost like a like an earthy brown uh, undertone to all of that that is really nice and this is about bang on to the the color that I had the other day when I was painting the bulk of these pieces and as you can see right here on the swatch this is why you need the swatch it's so that way you can make sure that you are mixing colors consistently or uh, as near consistent as as you can and again for me you know when this dries it's going to be it's going to be bang on it's not going to be an issue whatsoever okay so you know when I'm loading this up I like to really do a nice kind of overall uh, lighter dry brush coat than um, and then come back over the top of it with a heavier kind of once over pass and the, the reason that I do that is it, I, I found that when you have like a nice rich undertone if you don't do a very light layer of dry brush first you are gonna have way too many voids you're gonna have way too many low spots that don't get any paint on it whatsoever and it just kind of it, it it's a little bit uh, I don't know it's, it's a little bit too much if that makes any sense so as you can see here I'm kind of doing a, a lighter coat a lighter dry brush so that way I'm, I'm just kind of getting in there I'm hitting the high spots but I'm also kind of hitting I guess what you would call effectively mid spots so that I don't have this really um, really heavy undertone or base layer coming through the top and this was this is something I found out I guess doing the painting on the caverns deep ice caverns pieces um, there were some pieces that I wanted to paint you know narrow dungeon passes things like that in the ice theme and I couldn't uh, you know I couldn't do that without making first like a, a, a nice kind of uh, base dry brush first of the of the white and caverns dry brush color because otherwise it just it comes out way too dark uh, if you just try to to go from the base layer that kind of blue and the ice caverns up into the the ultimate the snow or frosty frozen parts it just doesn't work so okay so here again I'm just hitting this to try to fill in the the high points and the midpoints and then what I'm gonna do now is this is the the part where I I let the brush kind of stay a little bit more wet and I kind of come over the top almost at like an angle um, and I'm just hitting the high spots and as you can kind of see here you see that you get a lot more paint on those high spots uh, that's kind of what I want that's what I want to do and that way you have almost like a, a nice kind of phantom dry brush layer over the base coat of purple and then you're coming up over the top and just hitting the edge the the real high spots with some nice thick uh, a thick coat of paint there and I found that it just works better it makes more sense for me to do it this way yeah see that because that's just it just looks nice right it, it really helps to allow that um, gray skull green color to pop and you, you're not just left looking at a bunch of voids you know because if, if you would have come over the top of this with just this like one wet layer or um, 
you know just the one dry brush i feel like you, you're just missing too much right you there's just not enough uh, color information there to really be uh, pleasing uh, aesthetically so that, that's what makes the most sense for me all right now the 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 next step that we're going to do is something that was not an accident something i kind of wanted to think about first before doing it and that was to add a little bit of color interest by way of a uh, I guess you'd call it uh, the interference violet by golden paint and that color is incredible um, in the way that it works is you need to lay first like a layer of black paint down something nice and dark and then you come over the top of it with the interference paint and so the darker the color is that you are interfering with the more you're gonna get that nice iridescent violet um, you know uh, kind of magical color if you are using it over a very light colored paint instead of like black what you end up with instead is more of a pearlescent sort of color uh, interference it, it, it's you kind of give it like a luster and a sheen but you're not getting like a real iridescent almost metallic uh, kind of color over the top if you go if you go too light so here I'm I'm just going to pick out a few stones and what you want to do when you're when you're doing this part on any piece that you're doing you want the eyes to kind of move around a little bit you don't want your eyes to get stuck in one area right so you pick out a, a stone here you pick out a stone there um, you know and then see if this would this would be way too unbalanced if I don't add a, add another dark stone somewhere on the left side yeah you know, there's there's just not going to be your eyes just immediately going to jump to the right so this is just something for you know when you're trying to compose these pieces you, you really need to add some interest that allows the eye to move around a little bit so that's kind of what I'm doing here and it's a little bit awkward so the way that I filmed this I've never made videos before so the, the way that I'm filming this I'm kind of at this point looking through the phone because it's right in front right in front of the piece so I've got the phone between myself and the piece that I'm painting and it, it's just a little bit awkward so there's some points here where you, you know I'm gonna need to kind of go and clean things up and smudge it off with my thumb and that you know that just happens um, yeah so again at this point I'm just now cleaning my brush off and making sure that I've got my interference paint already poured in there I need to allow time for this to dry and to be honest when you're dealing with interference paint it's fine if you've not completely let the brush dry because it is, uh, it, it'll still work, right? And, and to be honest, you could honestly mix the interference paint with some of these other colors and you, you would still, you would still have like a cool effect. And that's actually what you end up doing in the ice cavern set. So you mix basalt blue with interference blue and it gives this really kind of cool, um, cool iridescent blue effect, right? So. Uh, when you're doing this too, you, you don't want it to be too heavy. You almost want this to be like a dry brush when you're doing it. And as you can see, as you just come over the top of that dark color, you start to see the effect go into, into um, you start seeing that effect come out. And I just think it looks awesome. It, especially, you know, this is just such a classic color combo, right? You're doing a a violet, a purple, with a green, and you've got that kind of dark purple plum undertone there. It just, I think it just works really well. And uh, you know, one of the things too that's really cool about the uh, overall the Discord community is you have people who are like, oh my god, that's so cool, you know, uh, and it just inspires you and makes you want to kind of jump headfirst into things. And you know, that's that's something that 
I think is is really great about the community is is you have people who are like oh you know that's not that's not going to be collectible that's not the way that it works and and then you also have people who are really willing to take more risks and to um, you know come up with something really unique and and push others to do the same and so when you have kind of a, a creative community like that it's really cool and so as you can see this is kind of what happens if you go really heavy on that it just really pops and honestly I think it I just think it's a really cool effect and so when you're kind of making this ghostly spooky castle color like this this castle gray skull I think it's just really thematic to have these iridescent purple stones you know that have, might have been hewn from some kind of uh, almost like a wyver stone quarry right so you've got those just baked right in there adding a, a, a magical element to the overall structure of the castle really cool all right and so the last thing that you want to do obviously is to knock this down just a little bit with a one-to-one -one mixture of caverns dry brush and the uh, the stone edge dry brush so stone edge dry brush is a little bit too light uh, for my liking. I, I feel like it it will it just lightens this piece up too much. And when you're going with a darker theme than the than the typical field stone color for castles and field stone pieces, you need to have something that is going to um, that's going to be complementary to that and just like with Caverns Deep, all those pieces are so dark and they're they're dank, they're down there in a, obviously in a cavern. It works really well to have that cavern dry brush that just kind of brings brings out the, uh, the high spots and makes some nice highlights on your pieces, but also um, isn't, isn't too blinding or like overwhelming. It doesn't have a lot of like super highlight reflective value. Uh, but I, but I do think that the stone edge dry brush is a little over the top for just a straight application on these pieces given given the theme and given how dark they are to begin with all right and again so sorry I'm kind of rambling here I'm recording now over the raw video and trying to just make this uh, this video work so that it's it's a straight shot all the way through you can see start to finish this is a very easy process it's it's not complicated it's not too tedious uh, the, the one thing I think that takes the most amount of time is just having to hit every single piece with uh, you know with that intermediate layer and again here we are with the swatch right so this is you know I probably could have gone a little bit darker here but the the overall effect is going to be fine. So now I'm now I am going to go ahead and hit this with a dry brush. Oop, that, so that's going to be too heavy. So go ahead and wipe that off with your thumb. It's not a big deal. Uh, in the sweep of all of the pieces that you so in the in the sorry about that the audio got cut off. Um, I got some kind of battery notification. Thanks a lot, Apple. So. In the sweep of all the pieces that you have, when you're looking at them all, uh, you know having a little bit of inconsistency on something like the the very end dry brush is is probably not going to be a big deal. And again, just like before, what I like to do when even when dry brushing is I'm going to come just over the top like that, and I try to get this brush as dry as I can so that way you know I'm just hitting it with the pigment effectively and, I, and as you can see I'm coming over the top of it just hitting it with the flat side of the brush as much as I can I'm not in there with the end of the brush digging in deep I'm just hitting the high spots just enough to bring out those wonderful details that the good folks over at Dwarven Forge the master sculptors that they have there have put in um, all those just amazing details for everybody and so one thing that I I did do a little bit though 
is you know some of these some of these pieces especially the um, the interference violet color I like to kind of knock them down a little bit right I almost like it's a look as if those pieces are coming through stone you know is almost as if the stone's a composite rather than just like your the straight gems and I think that just for this kind of piece it makes more sense to do it that way rather than to have what look like effectively inlaid you know or inclusion gemstones all throughout uh, the castle that just it's like a little bit too much all right so now I'm just I'm gonna kind of do one last like pass maybe a little bit heavier so that way we get nice bright bright highlight on a couple of the spots not a big deal it looks I think it looks great and so that's it as you can see this is a very uh, certainly I feel like certainly a unique uh, paint theme paint scheme um, you know for the pieces that you would ordinarily see on Dwarven Forge uh, but uh, I've got just a ton of castles that I have to do in this paint theme and I'm really looking forward to doing it so I, I appreciate everybody on discord uh, kind of egging me on to do this and giving me good feedback you guys are great thanks bye